Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Packers Unscripted from Packers.com. I am Mike Spofford, joined, as always, by my trusted colleague, Wes Hodkowitz. We're coming to you here from our studios at Lambeau Field to preview Sunday's game at Lambeau Field, Wes. It'll be the Green Bay Packers against the Arizona Cardinals. Before we dive into the Cardinals, a little bit of news on the Packers side of things with practice for the week resuming on Wednesday. Romeo Dobbs was at practice back from his one-game suspension from last week, and Christian Watson also back at practice after missing all of last week uh, and the game with an ankle injury. So the Packers possibly no guarantees as to how this is all going to shake out, especially with regard to Watson's ankle injury, but possibly getting the receiving core back to full strength here with the uh, the club returning home to play at Lambeau. Yeah, and, and obviously, as Matt LaFleur sp- said, I mean, it, there's both of those guys, Dobbs and Watts. I mean, they're such critical pieces to this Packers offense. It's been that way for two and a half years. So to have both of them back, you know, and, and obviously the, the Dobbs situation, very serious. They, they went through the, the whole suspension over the weekend. Everyone's looking forward to moving past that. You know, we'll, we'll have to see at some point what, what Rome has to say about the whole situation. Right. But really quickly, I just want to say, I mean, you were the first one to point it out after watching practice on Wednesday. The the fact that we're even having this conversation about Christian Watson is still somewhat jarring to me. Uh, that he, for as nasty as that looked, as bad as that looked two weeks ago, for him to potentially be back in the cards for this game on Sunday, no pun intended, uh, th- that's, it's incredible. And as he was saying, I mean, there's been so many setbacks. And he said it wasn't even that when he went down, he wasn't even thinking so much like, oh, man, season-ending injury. He's like, man, I just don't want to miss one more game. Yeah. You know, we just he put so much work in. The hamstrings, knock on wood, have been solid so far. No real hiccups for the most part. And then and then you have this really scary-looking situation down the seam. So, fortunately, he, he got through it. Sounds like it wasn't even like the high ankle sprain variety. No break, obviously. And uh, if you can get... Number nine back on the field, this Packers offense can really go up. Yeah, the the fact that he's back on the practice field just 10 days uh, after that injury against the Vikings, um, I don't think any of us would have predicted that based on the video that we saw and uh, and how that injury went down. So uh, hopefully his recovery continues at uh, at the rapid and smooth pace that uh, that it has been so far. But with regard to the Cardinals, that is the opponent coming to Lambeau Field. Sunday, it's a noon central time kickoff. Arizona is 2-3 and three on the young season. Um, a huge, huge victory for the Cardinals last week, though. On the road at San Francisco, a division rival in the NFC West. They pull out a 24-23 triumph. Now, this is coming off of back-to-back home losses for the Cardinals against the Lions, and the Washington Commanders, and the second of those, the Washington game, was really a blowout. They lost, I believe, by 28 points. They go into San Francisco. They, um, it's a, it's a back and forth game early on, but then the 49ers block a field goal, return it for a touchdown late in the first half, and the 49ers are up 23 to 10 at halftime. They're up two scores, but the Cardinals' defense comes out and pitches a second half shutout. The offense gets two touchdowns, or I, I guess I should say a touchdown, I believe it was a couple field goals. Um, they pull out a 24-23 to win over a division rival. That's the type of victory, quite frankly, Wes, that can be a, a season turner, a season changer for a team that was 1-3 and three and going on the road to San Francisco. They come out of that with a win. They're 2-3, and three, and this is a team that, quite frankly, is going to be riding pretty high coming into Lambo. They got walloped by a Washington Commanders team that has sort of been walloping everybody uh, <laughs> you know? like, to this point, uh, especially on the offensive side of things. But if you look at the rest of their schedule, Michael, they lost by six at Buffalo. Uh, they, they lost a narrow game to the Detroit Lions. I mean, this has been a crew that has been in every type of matchup so far outside of... Just the um, yeah. you know revenge game, whatever you want to call it, with Washington and, and everything that happened there. But the fact is, and, and Matt LaFleur touched on it, I mean, you have a guy in Kyler Murray, I think, is playing back to his potential again. There was a couple of years there. Injuries played, obviously, a huge part into that. But it just it wasn't the, the offensive rookie of the year type guy he was his first two seasons yep. and, and how he got things started when Tom Clements was his position coach. 
now the trains seem to be back on the tracks, and he has some really unique weapons to work with. I mean, you look at Trey McBride, how he emerged last year, a guy that actually helped save my fantasy team last season at the tight end position. I know that's something you care a lot about. <laughs> um, but but then even, you know, we, there's so much focus on, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr., and there is there rightly should be. I mean, as Matt LaFleur mentioned, this is a budding star in this league, a guy that's going to be a factor for years to come. But, you know, Michael Wilson is off to a good start, too, who is a third-round pick for them last year. They've built this roster back up. They've kind of gone through a rebuilding phase while still having a franchise quarterback. And I, I think you're seeing Kyler Murray use all those weapons, in addition to the fact that at any given time, he can take off and be a real threat with his legs, too. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about how this Packers offense has certainly been among the league leaders in explosive plays and whatnot. This Cardinals offense with Kyler Murray, with Marvin Harrison Jr., is explosive in its own right. I mean, Harrison is averaging 16.4 yards per catch, which uh, which is a, a pretty big number. He also has four touchdown receptions. Kyler Murray has thrown seven touchdown passes. Four of them have gone to the rookie Harrison. Murray himself, whether it's via scrambling or the designed uh, running plays, the zone read, those kinds of things, he's averaging 10.7 yards per rush, um, which is why their team average rushing the ball is five and a half per carry. He is a big factor in that, taking nothing away from James Conner, who I believe is a very underrated uh, running back in this league. That he's he's a classic power back, and uh, and he can really give you problems. But Murray is the guy you're so focused on here because all you have to do is look at the highlights from last week against the Niners. He runs a simple zone read play, pulls the ball, keeps it himself, takes it to the right, and by the time he got to the 40 yard line, he was sticking his arm up in the air, knowing he was going to score. 50-yard touchdown, and he knew it at the 40-yard line. Yep. Nobody was going to catch him, right? So um, this uh, this this is a dangerous individual quarterbacking, I believe, a dangerous offense. Uh, if I may also interject with James Conner, why I love him so much is he's just, to me, he's the throwback, right? He's almost kind of reminds me like of the Edgar Bennett, you know, Dorsey Levins type back. Yeah. He's, this year, I think his longest carry is like 22 yards, but he's so dang consistent and, you know, other than, you know, some setbacks that he was able to, to work past early in his career uh, in a health perspective, I mean, this guy has been just steady as they go, consistent. And when you look at, at Kyler Murray and where he's been successful in the past, it's when he's had a running back that he can play off of and somebody that can kind of complement his strengths, too, as a runner. And it, it kind of goes back to what we saw in week one where when you had Jalen Hurts and the contrast there with a, with a Saquon Barkley type. So, yeah, the Packers have to be aware of all of it. But one of the questions I took from Insider Inbox this week is people were asking, like, okay, well, does this mean we're going to have to get back to the the really conservative pass rush approach and not letting him escape? That is true. You can't let him run over you. But Kyler Murray, despite not being the world's tallest quarterback, can also really thread you apart from the pocket. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a very versatile and, and dynamic player, and I think that's why this is a huge supreme test for them and also why... When the draft came around last year, it was one of the most obvious things that if Marvin Harrison Jr. was there for the Cardinals, that they were going to take him because that was sort of the big play target this offense was really looking for. Yeah, well, again, on the defensive side for this team, you're not talking about a whole lot of household names, though Buda Baker, the safety, is uh, is the guy that everybody yeah, talks about. tackles already, by the way. How many? 52. <laughs> wow. That's 10 tackles a game, bro. Yeah, 10 tackles a game for five games. Oh, um gosh. This defense, it's really interesting, Wes, because as we've mentioned a couple times, they got blown out at home by Washington. The commanders put up 42 points in that game. But the Cardinals come back the following week, and not only was it a second-half shutout against the San Francisco 49ers on the road, but the 49ers scored, one of their, scored seven of their points off a blocked field goal. Arizona's defense gave up only 16 points yep. to the San Francisco 49ers. That is something... To pay attention to again, that is that that's the type of thing that can that can change a team season that can that can get things going in the right direction. So even though you know, I believe their leading sack guy has three sacks. You know, nothing. Dennis Gardeck. is that the, that's the name? Yeah, Gardeck? Okay. former former college free agent. I think like six years ago. So yeah, obviously another guy. That's not again, like I say, not a lot of household names on this defense, but this is a unit that's starting to get things together and. They were able to pull out the victory against the 49ers last week by getting takeaways on San Francisco's final two possessions. The Niners were in position to put that game away yep. 
in down inside the red zone, inside the 10-yard line, and the Cardinals forced a fumble, recovered it, and then were able to score the go-ahead points, and then they got a deflection and interception of Brock Purdy on San Francisco's final drive. So two takeaways on the last two drives. They get a big road victory. Packers, on balance, have done a pretty good job protecting the football this year. You definitely need to continue that against these guys on Sunday. Yeah, and, and also on the other side of things, you know, Xavier McKinney trying to get six in a row off of Kyler Murray, who's only thrown two picks yeah. uh, through the first five games. So, yeah, I mean, we could sit up here every week and talk about how turnovers are going to be a huge factor in the game. They always are. Uh, but but again, I think from when listening to Jordan Love talk about it and some of the the maybe the mental errors, maybe some of the, the things he got downgraded on from that game last week, correcting those and being able to get on another run like he did at the second half of last season where he had one interception over his last six regular season games, whatever it was. Uh, that that's going to be really critical in this one. The, the the Cardinals in a lot of ways are going to kind of threaten you. I, they aren't going to give you as many versatile looks as what Minnesota did, but in terms of their playmakers, it's going to come from everywhere. The other thing to keep in mind too, uh, I wrote about it this week with Max and Bo Melton, the two brothers playing each other now in this game. Max's snaps had been rising steadily over the last month in his first season, second round pick. He was much like Edron Cooper with the Packers getting it kind of integrated and comfortable with this defense. Max has been doing the same thing with the Cardinals as well. So 32 snaps last week for him, played half the snaps. Very interested to see what those sub packages look like as he's kind of been rising up that depth chart as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I want to ask you about that, uh, the Melton Brothers story that uh, that is on Packers.com. It just went up shortly um, before we turned the cameras on here this morning. Um Max Melton, Bo Melton, Bo is the older brother of the two, both uh, both draft picks, and uh, and now going to be playing against one another on the same field, possibly lining up across from one another. Right, Corn, one's cornerback, one's one's a receiver. Just tell uh, tell the audience kind of what was your favorite part of putting this uh, piece together, and and do be sure to check it out on our website. So many cool parts about this. I, I think the neatest thing was the fact that both of his parents, Bo and Max's parents, they they went to Rutgers. And as it coincidentally turned out, his dad, Gary Sr., ended up playing for Greg Schiano too, and Schiano was just a graduate assistant there now. He's in his second tenure as their head coach. Uh, his mom was an, you know, uh, a basketball player for a very successful Rutgers women's basketball program during her time there. And, and the thing I loved most about it was the fact that they embraced those roots, both Max and Bo did. It took their own process to end up going to Rutgers, but they accepted that. And Bo, again, didn't commit to Rutgers when they were at the peak of their powers with Shiano. I mean, they were coming off a four-win season in which Kyle Flood got fired. And then the first year, as Bo is a senior in high school, they win two games with Chris Ash. But yet he stayed true to that program, stayed true to himself, even wrote a letter to his parents when he made the decision to commit to Rutgers, telling them, I'm going to Rutgers for you guys. I want to continue our family's legacy. And then Max ended up doing the same exact thing. So seeing the tight-knit nature of their family, three brothers that all went and played Division I football, their oldest brother, Gary Paul Jr., he ended up going to Delaware State. They're all going to be in attendance. Gary Sr. and their mom also got these really cool custom-made jerseys. They didn't want to do the thing where you just slice the jersey in half and sew it. They did a thing where they kind of like like hemmed it, where it's they split two jerseys, but one is Bo's number eighty on the back, and the other one is is Max's number sixteen. Or I should say Bo's eighty on the front, Max's sixteen on the back, and they flip that, and they'll both wear those jerseys for the game. So I think that's pretty cool. Very special family, uh, very hardworking family, and the fact that as as Gary Senior said, they could have never envisioned a scenario in which their kids were playing in the National Football League, let alone both of them at the same time. We'll have to see. Their their older brother is keeping his fingers crossed that they're going to end up lining up against each other. He said, he, I didn't put this in the story, but he's like, hey, if they want to tell Max, hey, when, when your brother's on the field, you just follow him wherever he goes. He would love that. <laughs> um, they both also play special teams, so we'll be curious. That, that's what I was going to ask. Is is there a chance with, with, Maybe. with Bo being a flyer on the punt team, and then would Max potentially line up across from him as the – you know, as the blocker of the flyer on the outside on on punt plays. So if you go off the film, 
they actually line up typically on opposite sides. Oh, okay. So Bo didn't want to get into the strategy <laughs> or the scheme of this, but is there a chance that Rich Passaccia or the, the staff over at the Cardinals would maybe flip them over to give them some jammer and flyer opportunities against each other? P- potentially, but uh, more than anything, both of those guys, and, and Bo had, had a great quote in the story too, saying that when his brother went to Rutgers, that was, that was enough for him. If it would have all ended there for both of them, or at least for Bo, he would have been happy. The fact that he got to play one year of high school ball with his younger brother, two years because of COVID with him at Rutgers, he would have been totally satisfied. The fact that they were with each other on draft night for both of the times that they got picked, and Bo in the seventh round in 2022, Max obviously is the 43rd pick this past April, they knew right away that this game was on the horizon. They knew the Packers and Cardinals were going to play each other. So to be able to carry their family's name into that, there's a huge sense of pride that goes along with that. In addition to the fact, I think there's going to be a lot of Melton family members balling up on the in the stands watching their two sons, uh, watching those two kids go at it. Well, if they do line up across from one another, whether it be on a punt or perhaps on a Packers offensive play from scrimmage, that would make a family photo for the ages yeah. right i mean that would that, oh. that would be that would be a, an all timer right there gary said that's all he wants he, <laughs> he, he'll, he'll be bawling he'll be crying every he gets that we were i was sitting there with bill rabier at at bo's locker just kind of following up with him on on wednesday and we so we got the dig brothers were the only ones that i could think of i, I don't know if there's any other it's it's not exactly something you can just ask elias like okay what brothers played against each other in terms of the contrasting positions sure. you know offensive lineman defensive lineman what have you uh, I, I came up with Stefan and Trayvon Diggs, but I mean, otherwise, I can't think of it, really any. Yeah, that's the, that's the only one that really. You have the McCordys, you have the Kelseys, you have all these people, but and you Gary, have the various kickers. You know, yeah, there have been you know totally. brothers of of kickers on different teams, but but yeah, in terms of actually lining up, you know, on, on at competing positions on the field at the same time, it's incredibly rare. And Gary Jr. had said too, he's like, that's the cool thing about it, is like my brothers play the antithesis of each other as far as their positions are concerned, so. <laughs> While you know Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey's mom talks about, well, I just cheer for the offense. Um, Vicky's going to have some decisions to make <laughs> and how things are going to play out on Sunday. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, um, I want to get to our keys to victory, but I'll take care of some sponsor business first. Sirius XM NFL Radio delivers hard-hitting analysis and up-to-the-minute NFL news that true football fanatics need 24-7. 365. And at Cousin Subs, we have something for everyone, like our Wisconsin cheese curds, mac and cheese, golden fries, and creamy shakes, all paired with your favorite sub or sub in a bowl. Cousin Subs, 50-plus years of better. One quick note on the Cardinals I forgot to mention when we were talking about their offense. They have lost one of their starting offensive linemen. Gar- Will Hernandez. Hernandez is out for the season. Do you know who he was? Do you know who Will Hernandez is? I, re- I vaguely recall. He was Aaron Jones's guard at uh, That's Texas right. El Paso at, at UTEP. Second I round knew pick. I knew there was something in the back of my mind that I knew something about Will Hernandez, and uh, um, and you've got it. That's the one. So, the Cardinals will be plugging in a uh, um, a new guard uh, in this game. So we'll see how perhaps that uh, impacts their offensive line. But um, keys to victory. What jumps out at you? The top of your list for this one for the Packers to leave. Lambeau Field Sunday afternoon at four and two. Packers got to run the football. Uh, Arizona is another team here that has kind of struggled to stop the run so far this season. Twenty eighth uh, in rushing yards. I mean, twentieth in yards per carry. But I think it's about a hundred and fifty a game. Yeah, around there that they're that they're allowing. Yeah, it's one one forty seven actually. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, they, I think you got to get Josh Jacobs established in this thing, and and they kind of were trying to find some hard yards last week. They eventually got them, but I mean, I think that's going to be a a big thing being able to the, let me put it this way the better that you run the football i think the less chances that jordan love has to take with throwing the ball that's sort of been in the last year and a half kind of the the standard it feels like when, when that's they a good way to put well, it jordan protects the ball well so yep. you want to do that and then also the fact is um they have not been good on third downs and if you think about it in terms of i'm speaking of the defense of arizona cardinals it makes sense because when you're giving up Yards like that, you're getting into more favorable second and medium, third and short situations. And I, I feel like that's one area where the Packers, again, need to, to do better. Last week, they had to go a bulk of that game without a third down conversion. This one, I think you got to come out and really set that early. Yeah, and I agree I agree with you 100% with regard to the running game. Uh, you know, the Packers were facing the worst rush defense in the league last week in the Rams. But the Rams kind of loaded up to stop the run. They didn't play. They didn't play two safeties back. They didn't play. I mean, Matt Lafleur estimated they played maybe ten snaps of two shell. They were bringing an extra safety down. They were not going to let the Packers run the ball the way some other opponents had run the ball against them. And unfortunately, then it it took a while. It really kind of took 
to probably the that last drive of the first half, quite frankly, before Jordan Love found his rhythm and got things going in the passing game. If the Cardinals are going to load up to stop the run, I don't know if they will, but the Packers need to find that efficiency in the passing game early because you you don't just run the ball to run it into a brick wall. Right. If a team is loaded up, if, if they're playing single high safety and it's lots of one-on-ones on the outside, that's an invitation to throw the football and you have to find completions, you have to find consistency and efficiency in that regard. The other thing for me that this game comes down to is simply the explosive plays. I think the Packers are going to have their chances to make some as they have every week so far this season against this particular defense, but this is about limiting the explosive plays that the Cardinals might be able to make, whether it's Kyler Murray on the zone read or on a scramble where he's buying time and extending the play, or Marvin Harrison Jr. doing things down the field. You have to limit the explosive plays. You have to really make the Cardinals earn everything they're going to get. Make make them go the long way to score, and perhaps then a mistake happens along the way, and they and they don't get the uh, the point production they're looking for. If the Cardinals if the Cardinals start uh, you know hitting the Packers with explosives, um, this uh, this could turn into a rough day for the defense. That's why I think it's also a really important game with Xavier McKinney and whatever they decide to do at the other safety position. If that ends up being Evan Williams again, or you know if Troy or Alexander comes back, what the domino effect of that is on the rest of the secondary. But specifically looking at Xavier, he was mentioning last week with Matthew Stafford looking him off. That was about the most that that's happened to him so far this season. People just don't want to go with the ball with where he is right now. And I feel like when you look at Marvin Harrison Jr. and the big plays he's making, and, and he can do it after the catch too, but the the benefit of having someone like X back there is that that's what challenges the quarterback when in terms of wanting to threaten the top of a secondary, mm-hmm. you know, the ceiling of a secondary. And Every single time that ball is aired out, just with his quickness, with his instincts, and just his football IQ back there, it seems like Xavier always puts himself in a position to make a play on that, if not intercepting it, breaking it up like he did late in that game last week as well. So um, this is a great game to have a, a player like Xavier McKinney on the back end, but at the same time, if you do rupture, if, if Marvin Harrison Jr. does get one on you, I think the big key is looking at some of these games these last few weeks is you can't let him do it again. You have to be able to rebound from that because otherwise it can be a really long afternoon for your defense. Yeah, um, for sure. Looking around the rest of the league at week six quickly before we go, the NFC North leaders, the Minnesota Vikings at 5-0, and they are on their bye week. The Detroit Lions are back from their bye. They are 3-1. and They head to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Wow. Dallas coming off of a very gritty, hard-fought, bad-weather, late-night victory at Pittsburgh uh, with the late touchdown there. And uh, I'll just say this, it would not surprise me in the slightest if the Detroit Lions go back into Dallas and run another tackle eligible play by the goal line, right? It's, it's possible. Dan Dan Campbell is gonna is gonna put that in, and and uh, and they're gonna do they're gonna do it again. Dan, I, may, maybe not. I don't know. Dan I, Campbell's. I just had to say that. he's gonna option out the quarterback, and he'll have the offensive lineman take the snap this time. Is what will <laughs> yeah, happen. There we go. <laughs> Riverboat Dan. Um, a <laughs> couple other a couple other interesting games though. Actually, Thursday night football. San Francisco is at Seattle. Suddenly. The Seahawks had started 3-0. and They're now 3-2. and The 49ers, the defending, obviously, NFC champions, Super Bowl participants last year, they are 2-3, and looking to avoid going to 2-4. Uh, to and four. Very interesting game on, uh, on Thursday night. Um, the Chicago Bears looking to get to 4-2. and two. They have the Jacksonville Jaguars in London early on Sunday morning. Um, your thoughts on any of those games? The 49ers run this thing two ways. They either make it, they threaten the world championship, they threaten a Super Bowl, or they, everyone just gets hurt the same <laughs> year. Like, it's the weirdest thing. It's like some teams rebuild, the, <laughs> like the Niners have to unfortunately, like, heal. Like, it's just, again, I was saying to my buddy this morning, I'm like, Jake Moody got hurt. Yeah. Like, it's like, ev- like when you yeah, talk Yeah, they about, had to sign a kicker now. When you talk about, like, bad luck and misfortune, I mean, I understand people always perseverate on the Packers and what their injury situation is looking like. I, I tell you what, every three years or so, the 49ers just get hit with all of it. And, and we'll have to see how they respond. They'd done okay up until, you know, these last few weeks, but it's a lot to, it's a lot to take onto the ship. Washington doing the short trip to Baltimore is my probably game of the week. I am just so excited to see how, you know, Daniels and everything he's accomplishing so far, 
Baltimore has kind of battled itself back as well. Yeah, that was an 0-2 start for the Ravens, and they've gotten things uh, rolling in the right direction. Yeah, so I think Daniels going up against that crew is going to be really, really interesting to watch and seeing if uh, he can continue the streak because, I mean, right now at this point in time, I think we all would agree we're looking at the offensive player, the rookie of the year at this point. Well, especially at one week after Joe Burrow just threw five touchdown passes against that Ravens defense, and now that Ravens defense has to deal with uh, with Jaden Daniels. Yeah, the Ravens, have, that's been a, yeah, they, they, they took a lot of hits with their personnel, <laughs> a lot of hits with their coaching staff, yeah, and did. it's been a harder road ahead this year. Yeah, I think so. Monday Night Football as well. Two teams in the AFC East that are about as de- desperate for a victory as it gets. The Buffalo Bills coming off of losing at the horn a 59-yard field goal by the Houston Texans in, of the walk-off variety. So the Bills lose a crusher there. And then the Jets, of course, now having changed head coaches, changed offensive play callers, all kinds of chaos and turmoil at uh, um, with regard to the Jets, and they're playing at home on Monday Night Football against a division rival. Yeah, and I mean, two weeks ago, I was talking about how Buffalo was the the team to me that was right at the top of the heap of this league, just based on how much everybody had counted them out, just based on how many people had what they had to say about Josh Allen. And yeah, unfortunately, you lose a couple tight ones, and this is where you sit when you're at three and two. So uh, yeah, it'll be a big challenge for them. Very interested to see how the Jets respond. You know, there's there, those things go one of two ways. Uh, it, either you you rally after a coach gets fired in that next week, or sometimes you get walloped. Yeah, exactly. Know? Either either there's a there's a galvanizing that goes on, or there's more of a more of a splintering and falling. Apart yeah, that's it. That goes on, and everybody is going to be watching the Jets uh, to see what happens there. So with that. We'll call it a wrap on this edition of Packers Unscripted. Be sure to follow all of our coverage of the team. Everything from Sunday's game against the Cardinals will be on Packers.com. And check out Wes's really cool piece on Max and Bo Melton. That is also on our website. So for Wes, I am Mike. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. We will see you next time. Yeah.